What's up everybody? Cam here with Two Button Brass for another episode of the Excerpt Challenge. I'm caffeinated, I'm delirious, it's a bit of a vibe, but what is also a vibe is that we're delving into some Paul Hindemith today. It's gonna be a great time. Intros are very hard. Roll sequence! This week's episode of the Excerpt Challenge will focus on Paul Hindemith's Symphonic Metamorphosis, specifically the second movement, Scherzo. Paul Hindemith and his wife Gertrude fled from Germany in 1938 before eventually arriving on the eastern United States in 1940. Paul would complete this work in 1943 and it would be premiered in 1944 by the New York Philharmonic. So the theme that we hear so prominently throughout the second movement actually originates in a 1768 dictionary that described Chinese music. So I'm not quite sure if that means it was a Chinese dictionary or if it was a European dictionary describing what Chinese music is. Uh, basically saying in this, in co this context that it heavily uses the pentatonic scale, which we will hear a lot of in this specific excerpt. Regardless, Carl Maria von Weber found this melody and incorporated it into his 1805 piece Chinese Overture, and then again later reused the same melody in 1809 for his incidental music for Turnadot. This arrangement is ultimately what inspired Paul Hindemith to include this melody in Symphonic Metamorphosis. He owned a piano duet or four hands arrangement of the Turnadot music and got to and played this with his wife. Um, so Paul Hindemith took this theme and others and added new musical lines and instrumentation, thus evolving or metamorphosizing them. Thus, the entire name of the piece actually reads Symphonic Metamorphosis on Themes by Carl Maria von Weber. This is a really unique excerpt in the orchestral world, and it's one of the more contemporary ones we have, being from the 1940s. We think of classical orchestral repertoire as more from the 1800s especially, but 17 and hundreds and classical music as a whole, you can really generalize even further past that. Uh, so we see some more modern compositional, you know, conventions in the writing, which we can get, we'll get into all that later, but it's a really unique piece and I'm really looking forward to it. So without further ado, let's dive in, shall we? Boom. It occurred to me I should probably go over the rules, so let's do that real quick. The, the rules of the excerpt challenge are as follows. Each contestant today has been given the music in advance so that they can listen to it and they can transpose it if necessary. Uh, but they have not practiced this at all. So they will now take five minutes and learn it to the best of their ability. After those five minutes are up, they will play it one time through, mistakes and all, top to bottom. And then I, as your omnipotent, lovely host, will cast my judgment down upon them and pick a winner. Uh, <laughs> I'll try to do so in a less, less righteous manner. Um, but that's the general overview of the challenge. So now, without further ado, let's dive in, shall we? <laughs> First up this week is Mr. Sven on trumpet. Let's see how he does. Pressing play. No. Well, he's taking a moment to figure himself out. I'm going to do something I've never done before for one of these. I am actually going to be taking some notes. So hopefully that'll help kind of um, structure my criticism and my feedback and my ultimate judgment. Five minutes. <laughs> the Alexa timer. I'll let everyone else, we, we, we were still in the analog era of days uh, gone by. I'm curious to see what tempo he takes on this. For the five minutes, a slower tempo is good. Nice, that was good articulation. I was going to say early harmonically, we have this G and this E flat. Bye, um, and then it's an E major arpeggio. 
This could really be in a rock concert. A lot of orchestral tuba playing is knowing when to come out of the texture for feature moments, such as this excerpt, but when to retreat back into the texture when you are playing a more supplementary or support role. And that's that's a large part of what any orchestral music does. It's not unique to just tuba players, but that is absolutely something to be look out on the lookout for in this excerpt in particular. If symphonic metamorphosis went off in the club, man, yeah, I'd be getting down. I'd be getting down. No questions asked. Good observation. My preference is to accent those beats three. And in the performance setting with an entire trombone section, you're going to want to hit those beat ones with some force. Um, you hear that in performance, and it's just, you know, you'd like if I had any hair, it'd fall out. Like, it just, <laughs> like it just hits you in the face. And that's the danger right there. I can already hear him slowing down in the pedal register. That's what everyone does on this. And that's his time. Okay, okay. Lots of good practice, and he has, like, Sven always has a really good comprehension. He comes in very informed. i be judging you very harshly for this. Mm -hmm. Oh, is he waiting out the full five bars? <laughs> Fair enough. Very, very strong opening from Sven. Uh, brief recap, uh, the strongest parts were actually the arpeggios, I thought came out wonderfully. The ending was great, last note had the right quality to it. Um, the interesting thing I noticed was his breathing, where he was able to connect everything more and get that bright tone. Tubas have to take a lot more breaths, and that actually breaks up the phrase uh, more. So it was, it, was, it was, in a way, it was a different phrasing that he used, but I liked it. It was more of like a theoretical hypothetical. Well, if you played tuba and you never had to breathe, what could it sound like? Oh, it could sound like that. So that was a really interesting experience for me to listen to, and yeah, I thought that was very well performed. Okay, let's move on to our next contestant. Next up, we have Mr. Danielle Skib. Daniel. Da Daniel Skib. Same as Daniel. <laughs> Pressing play. No. Every time I get a tuba challenge, I'm like, good. Nice. Yeah, and this is the low, so this is a fun one fun. too, especially with the low uh, tuba stuff. And you chose a great piece. I'm starting my timer. No. Okay. Yeah, let's check this out. All right. All right. So very curious to see his interpretation of the style if he's not played these specific licks. Exactly. And the melody really is on those B3s, it's kind of like I mentioned with Fend. Yeah. So I liked how he's cleaning up those arpeggios, the top notes need to have a ring to it. So I liked how he did the centering. The second look is the coolest thing. I agree. It's, it's a good thing to spend the time on. They don't have to absolutely blast, but they do need to slap a little bit. But yeah, ba -ba 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 -ba. But what needs to be right is the tone. Tone being different than intonation. Great last note. Honestly, I've liked both their last notes better than I like my own last note. I had a pretty decent take, but then my last note, it was just like, ah, it just didn't quite work. Yeah, getting that F, that's the beat two or the third to eighth note, ba ya boom. It's a half step higher than the low, low, low note. Um, and when you're that low on the horn, you lose the precision very easily. So that's a lot of what the practice of this excerpt goes into is the precision. Making a lick this low and this uh, boisterous still flow in a precise and clear manner. Oh, that's the time. Okay. I love his distinction between more melodic moments and more background moments. Okay. I'll show that for a minute. Very curious to see how this goes. Okay. 
Chris. <laughs> Uh, that was very nice. Uh, so I the first set of arpeggios I really liked. The intro was really nice, and I think there was just one or two notes I would have liked to be centered more. The hard thing about that intro, let me take these off, is not slowing down. You get into the low pedal part of the horn, and I am even a little guilty of this in mine, where you just lose a little bit of the, spe uh, the speed. Um, the accompanying lines were largely very good. Uh, the switch from featured melody to background roles, uh, Dan does very well here. Me, I'm in the judges chair, it's like, man, he messed up my favorite lick. F my nuts, way too mean. <laughs> but that's how the judges are sometimes. They'll just kind of like arbitrarily focus in on one thing. Um, so there you go, that's a little insight into what an actual audition would be outside of our, you know, self-contained little excerpt challenge. But yeah, largely very good, Dan. Largely very good. I think with especially more time, he would really absolutely murder this thing it'd be it'd be nice um okay but we got one more so let's move on to mr alexander milzard i freaking love symphonic metamorphosis yeah. that's a <laughs> that's a great observation Word for the wise when you, uh, you uh, especially that, younger players you see the forte fortissimo and than you than see the pedal tones you just want to go absolute ham yeah, um, so you want a little bit of splat on some of the low notes, in my opinion. Here. It's not like just this pure, um, pure, pure tone, like nice but you don't have to push it super sound. hard. You know, that's that's a really good observation. But let's hear how he does. I'm expecting good things. So I'm taking it up. Uh... Okay, as long as it remains okay. consistent with the octave, I wouldn't take the E up randomly. Nice, nice. And he also has a kind of similar to Dan, really good distinction between the melodic moment and the accompaniment moment. That was a great arpeggio too right there at the end. Yeah. Those arpeggios are fine. They I don't I think those are perfect. And he's phrasing that well. I, he's really bringing out the melody on those B3s, the ends of the bars, and while the beginning of those bars is solid, it's not the focus, it's not the emphasis. Nice. Old ditties, and I'm not quite. I would like it's the first lick and the second lick. Like that's really where most of the beef is. Like these arpeggios are fine. You know, I don't think he really needs to do any more work on those. Fine. Yeah, and watch those inner notes of those arpeggios because we have a really cool the the the, vo the voicings in the harmonies that are happening on the and the interior. We have the low note, high note. Is really cool. That's what kind of connects everything. Oh, he's busted out the metronome. Let's see it. Has anyone ever busted out the metronome? I mean, it's not like an illegal tool. Yeah, as long as the metronome isn't in the final take, yep. I mean, it's a practice All tool. Right. Oh, is that his five minutes? I am really glad that I squeezed that in. And <laughs> no, that was, I mean, that was like the that smartest was, uh, thing he could have done right there. Absolutely. Because well. like now it's grooving. Before it was, um, it was having a little trouble I fitting in. Spend more time. Don't mess up. Don't mess up. <laughs> Very good, very good. I'll take it. I'll take it. 
Yeah, all right. Very good from Alex. So it, the strongest, like the 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 second lick, the very pentatonic, boy ba bo ba bo ba ba, nailed that. That was nice. The ends of the arpeggios were all glorious. Uh, but the inner notes got lost a little bit, and that's a very easy thing to do, right? The first part and the last part of a phrase are great, and then in the, the, the little middle part sometimes doesn't come out as much. Um, and then the accompaniment, uh, see, I'm, I'm kind of going down the line here. Finale was good, and yeah, the, the, the pentatonic, the style, was largely very good. So I'm going to take a little time to deliberate, and I will see you guys when I announce the winner. See you in a bit. Boom. And we're back. It was a very, very difficult deliberation. So this one was actually neck and neck all around. Uh, the way I scored it was uh, there were six sections in this excerpt. There was the first introduction lick. There was the second pentatonic lick. Boy, up, up, oh, bum, 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 bum. There was the first accompaniment lick. Bum, 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 bum. There were the arpeggios. Bum, 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 all that stuff. There was the second accompaniment lick, bum, ba, ba, bum, ba, ba, bum, the repeat, and then the final phrase. So that's a total of six phrases. Each of the three guys played two of the phrases best. So like they, this guy, so Sven played two of the phrases best. Dan played a different two. It was like dead even. I'm glad I scored this because I don't know how I would have actually done it otherwise. The first accompaniment section, bum, 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 was all Sven. He had the best style, he had the best note lengths, as well as backing off to the appropriate degree. That transition from sticking out in the texture to the, uh, from being the feature to retreating back into playing the supporting role, he did the best there. And then he also nailed the final part, which just bonus points to that. Uh, best last note by far. Uh, and then, yeah, that's like the ending is very important on this excerpt. The ending is very important in general. Uh, the, you might have heard the saying, the most important parts of any piece of music are the first bar and the last bar. Well, last bar, that goes all to Sven. But the first bar goes all to Dan. <laughs> Dan had the best intro, had the right style, good tempo on it too. And then also the final accompaniment section right before the finale was great. Um, he had the right style, he had the right delicacy to it, kind of for the same reasons that Sven nailed the first accompaniment section, Dan nailed the second accompaniment section. Alex uh, really had the best arpeggios though. Bom ba ba beam, bom ba ba beam, bom ba ba beam. Perfect note length, great introduction, great intonation. Uh, the style was spot on, and he also had the best second pentatonic lick. Boy up up oh bum ba ba bum. That's where that style comes in. Where you know, as a trombone player, he'll play this with a tuba, uh, whether you know he transposed octaves or not. The, the he really captured what that meant. So like I mean everyone did multiple things really well. Like I had this was quite the deliberation and I'm I just I hope no one's offended if you didn't win it this week because my god you're not making this easy on me. <laughs> but anyway, the winner of the symphonic metamorphosis two button brass excerpt challenge is Alex Melzer. Give him a hand everybody. Give him a hand, everybody. Well done, well done, well done. So what put that over the edge, everyone did an equal amount of things great. Um, Alex, that second pentatonic lick, boy up up oh bum ba ba bum which I think is kind of the most important lick of this whole excerpt, he nailed, like, just by far. So it was just that little extra bonus point, put him on top. But... Let's see what you guys in the comments have to say. Do you think Alex won? Maybe Sven? Maybe Dan? It was really close, so I'd love to hear all of your opinions. Well, that'll do it for this week. Thank you guys so much for joining us in another excerpt challenge. We so enjoy making these, and we're just really grateful that you come and watch them. Uh, so, if you'd like to see more of our content, please feel free to subscribe down the, uh, below and hit that little bell icon for more content uploaded every single week. Until next time, guys. See ya!